Hello there guys and welcome, welcome back to the channel right now. After unnecessary and too long of a delay, we are finally getting back to finish these lists. And today we're going to be taking a look at top 15. That's right, I extended this list to top 15 uh, dual purpose Balagans champions overall over the last six months. And then we're going to be left with top 10 seven star champions and an update to the tier list. Now, as always... Keep in mind that this is a mixture of my own personal views of the game with current game relevance and trends. We all play the game differently with different setups, different preferences, different commitment levels and different skill levels. And that will significantly affect the way we see the game. This is my list and this is the way I see the game. You are more than welcome to disagree with it, comment on it, stuff like that. Just, you know, be respectful about it. There are no two people on this planet who see exactly, you know, everything the same way so keep that in mind right that said again i have to apologize about the delay uh truth is sometimes i just kind of put too much pressure on myself in regards to certain things and uh then it leads to kind of downward spiral but uh that put aside let's get moving and uh let's take a look at the champions that we have this time around so Obviously, there will be a ton of amazing Balagrand champions that could make this list, and I'm not going to include with it because I don't have enough experience with them or because I haven't seen them uh, actually perform uh, enough or for long enough of a time. Somebody like Shocker seems to be do going on up and up and up, could potentially make it up then, maybe Adam Warlock from the more recent champions, and so on and so forth. Additional thing is I'm not including champions that I included in the top 10 attacker and defender rankings to be fair i did really want to add in photon in the dual purpose list as a champion because i do think she kind of deserves to be but the criteria for defensive a uh, list was that the champion gets drafted like 80 to 90 percent of the time specifically for defense and that's photon at the moment but that's largely i feel like due to the metas that we have had since she has been released where she really, uh, in the science meta, she was doing, you know, well offensively, but then we had the energy resist, and then now we are having uh, the meta where she can't gain any power. So she's basically relegated strictly as defender. I do think there is a very, 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 very good argument for her to appear on this list as well. Uh, but that said, obviously, again, there will be a ton of champions that are super close, especially at spots number 15 and 14 and 13, I feel like are almost interchangeable. Uh, and that will largely depend on your own personal experience. Uh, that said, in spot number 15, I'm placing in Havoc. Havoc has gained a lot of popularity in recent times. And now that he has been released as a seven star, I do think we're going to keep seeing him more and more and more and more because uh, he is kind of slightly on the older side in terms of his abilities, but his abilities seem to match pretty much perfectly what's needed for Balagrounds. In between his high energy resistance and uh, ability to do damage, obviously with detonations, if opponents are unable to play through them, uh, that makes him a significant defensive threat as well as a reduction of the critical hits that he receives and interactions with inequity. Uh, even if a champion is capable of taking him down, he will often, you know, cause them somewhat of a delay or trouble or at least get in a detonation. And the fact that he has to be reparried obviously can make it more annoying too. All that said, it's more so also his offensive chops that kind of seem to be working tremendously well for Balagrounds in general because he has access to virtually all non-contact fight style, which you can make with double medium plays and heavy attacks. Uh, that means that you can go up against like Atumas. He obviously interacts extremely well with uh, Korg as well, and that matchup is great for him. And he just happens to clear some of the harder matchups. And as a five-star maxed out, he was kind of losing a bit of ground, and that's where I have the champion at. And I can fully agree that he's losing a bit of ground in Balagrounds. I do feel like that could be fixed with an Ascension, or the, if you pull out the 7-star. Uh, but since he now is a 7-star, I think he deserves to be up there. Now, Longshot is a champion that definitely has his ups and downs, but there is no denying the fact that Longshot can be one of the most annoying champions to go up against. 
And he can also be one of the most useful nukes, as the evident in this current meta, where he even without applying like a persistent dot at the beginning can make get himself to special attacks, can gain power, and then obviously he has to be countered on defense. He's not a champion that you can just willy nilly walk in with any random and then take on. And he's kind of one of those champions that really floats depending on matches because if science class is really really strong and present then you would unlikely to see him in the deck but if science class somehow gets neutralized he's one of those champions that kind of like pops in your decks pretty much immediately even right now in the current meta i'm running him as a rank four six star which you know is uh fairly odd or at this point for my account but uh it's because it's worth it and he's doing the job just fine uh so that's my spot 14 spot number 13 and put giving it to bishop and uh bishop's kind of like a very interesting champion because his value never drops to zero because even in a meta like right now people do run him because he can be a defensive annoyance especially due to the fact that all of the champions that rely on energy damage dots can suffer greatly due to their potency being reduced and if they happen to be bleeds or incinerates or cold snaps then uh you know you're probably gonna have quite a bad time um uh, offensively he could be more uh kind of like present in some of the recent matches but at the same time he's still capable of doing things and at least covering some of the rougher matchups like any meta pretty much you can use him against kingpin just because whenever opponents uh purify anything then they just get smacked by a lot of damage where is that ability to do to do to do debuff feedback each time the opponent purifies debuff they instantly receive damage skill champions also get passive stun when they purify stuns and uh, this is kind of becoming bigger and bigger thing uh in general i have taken bishop to rank three and there are matches where i skip him there are matches where i put him in uh but in generic matter whenever there is nothing really stopping him from working he's obviously a very very great addition to virtually any balagans deck if you miss Dex that level two, it's pretty much lights out and the fight's pretty much over. If he shoots the level one, that significantly delays the fight in most cases. Obviously, he has counters just like everything, but ultimately, I do think he deserves to be in this list. Moving on is Warlock, and Warlock is kind of in a similar case as Havoc, I feel like, where if he's just a six star rank five, which at the moment that is what I am running. He might not necessarily be up there, but if you do have him ascended or you have pulled the seven star and are taking him up, he once again is showing exactly why he has remained at top of the game for such a long time. He is a peculiar defensive threat where if opponent doesn't have any buffs and if there are some any debuffs being placed by the nodes that can significantly hamper the progress. Obviously, if you can't get rid of his armor up. You can't crit against him, which can be an absolutely devastating trap in certain metas, just like this one, or just like when we had crit me with your best shot meta. Again, debuff heavy metas uh, that debuff the attackers kind of favor him. Uh, the biggest weakness for him so far recent times has been the fact that his infection duration is reduced for each buff the opponent has. And recently we have had plenty of nodes where opponent does by default basically get a buff or two. Uh, so that has been kind of annoying. And then another thing is that he's taking quite a lot of block damage due to his playstyle. And not having willpower, healing, helping him out can, you know, lead to a bit of chip damage, which in turn, you know, hampers his scores. But ultimately, I do feel quite comfortable giving him spot number 12. Spot number 11, I'm going to be giving to Galen. Now, Galen is undoubtedly, I feel like, better attacker than his defender. but the thing with Galen is that as soon as some meta gives him that little bit of extra boost, he turns into a nightmare matchup without a very, very clear direct counter. Like it was evident in uh, some of the last metas as well, where if he gains any extra power gain, obviously he gains more special attacks, obviously he gains buffs quicker, and you can be taking damage. On top of that, we had the powerful from a far node, which effectively just supercharged the guy. Every time he dashed out of range, he gained his, you know, monster mass. Uh, and then pretty much by the time he threw, throws his first level one, he's going into the harvest. Now, there are counters to him as always. In a generic meta, he's not the most threatening champion if you can get rid of him and put him away fast. But in any meta that gives him more power, that slows down the attackers and doesn't let you nuke him, or any meta where 
he just gains random buffs from the nodes, he turns into an absolute menace on defense. And then obviously we cannot discount his offensive utility. Even in a meta such as this, uh, he, he still kind of works. He's not great. You can't get special attacks in, but you can obviously, you know, gain buffs and then enter harvest and then detonate. And that is majority of your damage. And then there will be the specific matchups that he absolutely annihilates if they involve armor up buffs or trying to power drain him something, for instance. Currently, Penny Parker is a massive problem and Galen is still pretty much the best answer for Penny Parker. So that's quite interesting in my opinion. But overall, I do feel like Galen is a very, very solid double purpose champion for Balagrounds. Moving on, spot number 10 goes to Absorbing Man. Now, Absorbing Man has not been spared by the selection of metas recently. At the same time, he's still present and we can still see him in the champion decks because obviously if there are any buffs that can expire. He, you know, uh, he kind of gets supercharged in a sense. He's one of those champions that's very atypical for his class because he doesn't really have any major buff control. But at the same time, his offensive versatility is crazy. And at this point, I feel like he's starting to get underestimated defensively and that region can really really you know take you for a loop where you feel like you're about to finish the fight and then he throws a special attack at like 15 percent health and starts massively regenerating and you can't do the damage and uh it goes sideways again uh as with many of these champions and with every champion pretty much in general whether he has much offensive use really does depend on the nodes but he's overall one of the war one of the most versatile champions when it comes to individual champion matchups because there's a huge huge variety of champions that you can actually use absorbing man against and then depending on the nodes obviously it will either shrink or expand if there's any buffs that opponents get that expire that will supercharge absorbing man and then you know you can do some crazy and absolutely insane things with him Couple of things about Absorbing Man, as always, his overall value greatly increases or decreases of the player's skill, how comfortable you are with light intercepts, and as well from the matchups, because if you do go up against uh, some of his favorite matchups like Annihilus, Terexes, and so on and so forth, like Null, for instance, he goes absolutely bonkers, like many of the champions in this list. Uh, the bad thing, though, is that uh, more than most champions on this list, Absorb Man is kind of dependent on AI being cooperative and AI just deciding to play passively can absolutely ruin your day with him. So, you know, beware, especially since we are having quite a lot of AI issues right now. Moving on, Spider Ham. And most people would consider Spider Ham as like an exclusive offensive champion. But... I chose to also include him in the defensive list. And the reason for that is I realized I have lost a lot of matches to Spider Ham placements. <laughs> like, he is one of those champions that he goes on defense and you don't really. No, when opponent drafts, you don't really tend to counter him because you typically look at him as a nuke attacker. Uh, against the Mystic Champions, and then he goes on defense, and you realize that, oh, holy crap, you know, all of my champions rely heavily on special attack damage, which he will mitigate, or I need to push my champions to level 2 in order to do my rotation, and that's annoying, and then obviously if he's awakened, he will put the pop poppers on you whenever he will evade, and the taunts, and uh, the fights can go sideways, his animations are quite unique, and uh, I genuinely, you know, it's an embarrassing amount of times how lost to a spider ham and since i have taken my spider ham to rank two even as an undoped sun star with significantly less defensive value than awakened one he still has put in some amazing <laughs> amazing defensive plays too so uh i did want to acknowledge that and uh i think this is one of those things that people typically don't really talk about like be be honest like how many times have you gotten your butt kicked by spider ham on defense I feel like that's a lot for quite a few people. And we just kind of have chosen to ignore and look at Piggy as like a champion that you can, of course, nuke down with like a good skill attacker. But I realize that every champion on this list can be nuked down. It's like in every champion in the game can be nuked down with a perfect counter. The fact of the matter is that 
Bellingham has a crazy good offensive rating. And he also gives a lot of people tons of trouble on defense. No question about that. And in spot number eight, I am putting in Onslaught at the moment. Now, Onslaught is one of those newer champions, which I did not want to include in the previous list, or more specifically, he wasn't out when I made the mutant list. And at this point, though, we have had the chance to experience Onslaught at least in a couple of metas. He is going on defense. We have found his counters, actually. You know, which champions counter players are getting better at dexing his special attacks as well. So, you know, uh, I feel like he has lost that brand new car smell where players are just banning him automatically or, you know, being completely unaware of how best to fight him. At the same time, he is still somebody that's absolutely a defensive threat that you do want to counter because at the very least you can take some neuro truck damage. At the most, you can get wrecked completely. And then the reason why obviously he is on this list is that he is also a very, very good attacker. Uh, in the generic meta, you pretty much just have your level 1, level 2 rotation that will just about put away anyone in comparable rank. In some supercharged metas like this, level 2 will be enough to absolutely destroy people. And uh, his offensive versatility is starting to shine already. The fact that he goes up against virtually all of the skill champions, like be those Korgs and Atumas, without taking any damage back. Is capable of obviously uh, dealing with the shrug of aspects of those champions. And then there are a lot of random champions and matchups where he just does great. He has bleed, incinerate, and shock potency reduction, so he's pseudo immune to those effects. He has the non contact attacks, which are super important, as I mentioned in the Havoc. Uh, uh, well, by the time I uh, talked about Havoc as well. And then tons of debuffs, does interact with inequity and interact with despair masteries as well. Neuroshocks make him one of the best miss counters as well, uh, because you can pretty much maintain them the entire fight. Then access to passive dots like degen, just very, very, very solid. There is no question about that. And I do think that he's one of those champions that's here to stay and that we're going to see a lot. But number seven at the moment i'm gonna give it to werewolf now werewolf i had a very very good feeling and i had been talking about how werewolf by night i feel is going to get a lot of attention very soon because werewolf by night is a champion that got kind of screwed over by kabam the most he came out in a time where science champions are absolutely dominating and uh, people were just not you know paying attention due to the sugar pill tactic and competitively it turned out that yeah effectively what you did not want to do is use the tactic defenders because there were enough tactic attackers that get supercharged and absolutely nuke all the mystics. So Morbius kind of got a boost in his usability. And Werewolf by Night, well, people just didn't want to risk and invest in a character that seemed like he's just going to get nuked by mystic champions because if Sasquatch and Rintra and whatnot get nuked, then what chance did he have? Well, as it turns out... Uh, his advertising was flawed as well, because he was definitely advertised as a two-way, so, well, he's a two-way champion, but it's like a defensive threat with a massive health pool and power gain and unstoppable. But that's only one very little part of it, not anywhere near enough attention and got uh, to his offensive versatility, the way he gains power, the way you can effectively play him like Valkyrie. Obviously, in this meta, he's gone bonkers to a point where he, you know, is just unfair <laughs> to a point where a six star rank two champion or rank three champion can nuke down a seven star rank two or rank three champion faster than just about anything and it's almost current balgrounds meta is almost about who drafts the werewolf if he's not banned that person gets an automatic round win i do however think we're going to continue to see him which is why i had enough faith to put him on here he might go up slightly, he might go down slightly. There is no chance that he's going to be as dominant further on as he's in this meta because that champion should, quite frankly, be nerfed to the ground immediately. But that's this meta. Outside of this meta, I do think he will still be extremely valuable because he's still a good photon counter. 
in the, with the regular nodes is still a good counter to onslaught to future Ant-Man, to ton of different champions and i do think we're gonna see more and more of him so there was a reason why i took my six star rank to rank five and ascended you this is by the way fun fact about werewolf by night werewolf by night was the only six star ascended champion that i have that currently exists in the game as a seven star i'm quite meticulous to which champions i choose when i send them and i Pretty much always selected the champions that i either don't think will come out as seven stars anytime soon or ever or the champions that really do need like a super high sig level and werewolf by night is the only champion that i have ascended that does exist as seven star that can work at a low sig level and that i could in theory acquire as a seven star the very ne next you know titan crystal pool it's just that i think the shout out here should go to nox the dragon uh who put in a ton of fate into me looking at his gameplay by werewolf by night uh so we'll see how he does but i think that spot is fairly fair at the moment now a champion that has just had a massive glow up in general shuri shuri seems to be pretty much the best tech choice as seven star for any rank up as well which is going to be one of the next videos and uh, she's just great. Now, she's not the fastest Balagrange champion. That is for sure. Even at the rank 2 or 3 level, you know, she does not nuke champions down because she does require some ramp up. But after the buff, that ramp up is much more tolerable. Uh, but what she kind of compensates that with is just the versatility. The fact that all of her attacks are non-contact. The fact that her ability accuracy cannot be reduced. The fact that she can block unblockable uh, specials um you know she can either have guaranteed crits or no crits at all the fact that she has you know access to very meaningful amounts of dot and also you know hit damage is decent once you get your crit going untouchable in her kit and the rest of the stuff ultimately shuri is again one of those champions with an absolute ton of oh the fact that she doesn't gain a precision buff from dex also has been you know super helpful is pseudo buff immune uh, and all that stuff comes together making an extremely versatile champion that you know has extremely capable of offense in a ton of matchups that matter and then and then and then obviously we need to talk about her defense because again in any generic meta she's already a capable defender because of her immunities the fact that she's immune to parry the fact that couple combos in you will have to effectively sit out uh, her untouchable unless you're playing pretty much perfectly with intercepts her special text tech forever and typically will you know provide you with some block damage all that stuff adds up and then similar to gallon if you do combine the specific meta with her she becomes an absolute nightmare and in Shuri's case, that typically is some sort of power gain, because uh, if she gains more power than she normally would, she just spends an entire time spawning special attacks, and there's not much you can do about it. So she's fairly unique, but definitely greatly successful and influential champion. And there's a very good reason why we see so many Shuri's ranked up to the highest possible rank of level. Now, spot number five goes to Hercules. And Hercules is, again, one of those guys that just kind of works better than he should under more or less any circumstance. Hercules is a ramp-up champion that works in battlegrounds very fast and very well offensively, which is, again, not theoretically how things are meant to work. And then, on top of it all, the fact that he's a cosmic champion that can play without buffs, basically, can give him a ton of advantage. The fact that... Uh, you can control exactly when your buffs activate uh, and how you do that helps him. The fact that he has all of these red numbers as alternate damage source does help him yet again. And then we can move on to his defensive uh, capabilities, which again, a lot of people underestimate Hercules' defender just because he's quote unquote easy to fight. And that is true. But he's not always easy to kill fast due to his immortality, which you need to wait out completely. And also due to his infuriate, reducing your attack and ability accuracy, making your offensive abilities fail. Uh, also offensively, one of the champions that can go stun immune, which I think is going to uh, be very, very important soon, by the way. 
but uh, ultimately there's a very good reason why he's the best champion in the game and even in a game mode like battlegrounds that's not necessarily you know playing to his strengths that offensively completely invalidates his signature ability because of the way the scoring works uh the fact that he's a ramp up champion and has you know persistent charges he still performs at an elite level and you do need to worry about him that's quite simple as that uh so i think well justified placement um now next up future ant-man now future ant-man post his bug fix has become a defensive terror again if you do have a very specific dedicated counter to him obviously you'll do just fine like as we have discovered werewolf by night can nuke him we have like long shots we have a handful of other champions hulkling deals with him but without a very solid counter like it's borderline impossible in between the glancing in between him messing with your power in between his own special attacks and uh taking forever and uh, being hard to punish and all that stuff uh in between you not being able to finish your combos he seems one of those champions that's just an absolute defensive Ugh. disgusting in the last match i think i lost more matchups to future ant-man than any other champion and then obviously he's still a perfectly capable offensive champion now again it does depend on the matters because like right now we're having a specific meta where he still kind of works he's just very very slow but in a pinch he can still be used on offense as well you just need to play him in a specific way uh, but you know we have had some metas that punish buff gaining heavily and stuff like that and then he might not be the best overall but in general he is a great great offensive champion tackling you know corgs and things and most of the mutants and just putting in work across the board so currently i do think he's one of the most valuable ballgrounds champions to have period Moving on, hence why I ascended him. It's a very good uh, shout, by the way, to say that every champion in the top 10, on the top 9, I either have a 7 star rank 2, 7 star rank 3, or 6 star rank 5, or ascended 6 star. And this third spot, I'm going to give it to Chavez. Now, Chavez has been nothing but absolute magic for me in every aspect of the game. Uh, she out of every single one of my seven star champions that have ranked up she has put in the most work period i'm not necessarily going to say that he's she's like the best seven star in the game or something like that but for me personally i have definitely gotten the most benefit from having chavez in between some seven seven uh for seven challenges in between alliance war in between battlegrounds different matters in between everything in the game combined including necropolis I have definitely gotten my money's worth most back from America Chavez because obviously with her tune-up, with her releases 7-star, she has completely reinvented herself. It's kind of funny to imagine that she was once considered to be like a meme character. And aside from looking like Kurt Russell from uh, Big Trouble in Little China, she's pretty much the perfect champion for me or has been. Uh, like she is perfectly capable balgans defender as well where yeah granted if the ai cooperates there is fairly decent amount of champions that in theory can take her down but at the same time uh even if you go in with a champion that's close to a perfect counter if the ai gets a bit finicky she will absolutely destroy and nuke people uh which you know she does have one of those special ais that just randomly throws a heavy attack in the middle of the map for no reason and that's where the trouble starts and then offensively she again uh she doesn't really play like a mystic champion because she just goes through all of the classes you know she's going she's very great against ton of skill champions you know with her healing you can use her extremely well against atuma or kingpin because she doesn't have any debuffs so she doesn't worry about that uh, then you can even use her against a bunch of science champions and she will do just fine and then we have the techs and the cosmics obviously she nukes extra hard so yeah uh overall over the ever since i got her to seven star took her to rank two unawakened awakened to her to rank three definitely has been an absolute diamond for me and then moving on spot number two i'm still gonna give it to kingpin uh 
<clears throat> and there is no question that Kingpin has had it somewhat rough recently with the Metis, just like many of the champions in this list. But I think what speaks to his stupidly powerful ability set is the fact that even when nodes kind of screw him over, he still is in the deck. Why? Because there are still matchups that he absolutely destroys or because he's still an absolute defensive nightmare. Like in the current meta, he is one of the top defenders as well with his shrug of abilities and it being incredibly hard to maintain debuffs on him. And then any meta where he works offensively and half decently, you know, he's just great with his degen, access to dot, access to unstoppable, debuff shrugging, again, uh, getting supercharged in a ton of any meta that places debuffs on him. And uh, in general, to be honest, I do have as quite a inkling feeling that Kingpin has been one of the champions in the game that has determined what metas we have or have not had. Uh, don't have any proof for that, but just going on a limb there. Uh, ultimately, is a definition of a dual threat in Balgrounds, in any kind of like generic meta. Yeah, he's not the fastest attacker, unless he gets supercharged, which would be simple, similar to, let's say, Abs. Abs is not the fastest attacker, unless there's something that lets you spam more special attacks or puts armor breaks on you. But uh, he's still, you know, plenty fast. Uh, he's incredibly fast when he does get supercharged. And again, in any generic situation, he is relatively tough defender with his increased combat power rate, especially if he doesn't want to throw his level 1. You pretty much never want to push him to level 2 because unless you have a counter to that unstoppable, you're going to be wasting a lot of time. Uh, it's trickier to dex as well. And yeah, whenever there are any specific requirements in the metas, he can become an absolute monster of a defender. So... Still think he's the best skill champion in the game, and I still think he's one of the best dual purpose champions in the game. And uh, it's kind of sad to say that he has been overthrown from the top spot as a dual purpose BG champion, because there is no question that's Hotlin. And this is like the one placement where there's just no real debate. Hotlin is, uh, at the very least, in the eyes of Kabam. Because Hulkling is de facto the most used champion in Battlegrounds. Like, if you put in together both offensively and both defensively, and you check how many matches, you know, for instance, Hulkling has had, Hulkling will be present in the most games ever from all the champions in Battlegrounds. And, and that pretty much explains everything that you need to know about him. He's the most used, the most popular Balgrounds champion for a very very good reason he's tremendously great offensively and he's also a defensive threat that pretty much also requires you to have a counter again just like any other champion on this list he can be nuked with a good counter you know get a tiger in there and he's gonna go down in like 35 seconds if that but if you don't have a counter yeah done kind of and offensively this is something I definitely want to point out and want to showcase. Offensively, Hulkling works when he absolutely shouldn't. And that's kind of like a marking of a leader or a great champion. Like virtually in all of the last three or four metas, or three or four seasons, I would say, there was at least one meta where I thought Hulkling wouldn't work but he did. Currently, it's one of those cases as well where I thought, yeah, okay, he gains power slowly. He doesn't have any access to dot. I don't think he should interact too great with power shield. You know, I don't think he's going to do that well. But he does. You know, he's still one of the champions people want have in the deck because he is one of the best counters to the champions you can't really dot. So, like, you know, your Baron Zemos and whatnot. And he's in the decks because he has defensive value. And he somehow has offensive value. And then there was the previous meta where, where, you know, pilfer meta, wherever a buff gets pilfered, opponent gets power. And I thought, it'll surely be almost impossible to use Hulkling, because opponent's going to get so much power. Well, it turns out, you could. You could kind of manage it in generic matchups, because, you know, you 
gonna bait out a level two and then just gonna go into nuke mode and jump down. And that has been the story time after time and time after time with Halkling. So that to me is again similar to Kingpin, where even if there are things holding him down, Kingpin can frequently work. Halkling is kind of doing the same thing, just even better to a de degree where he works when he absolutely shouldn't. He's insane in any generic situation when there's nothing stopping him, and he's completely unstoppable if there are any extra buffs or bonuses for him. And then, same thing defensively again, uh, perfectly respectable defensive performance. So I do think Hulkling is the best dual-purpose Balgrounds champion right now. Let me know what you guys think about the rankings. I will put them on the screen right here for you. Again, apologies for the delay, and uh, I'll see you soon. Bye-bye. Hello there guys and welcome back to the channel. So we have all the information about